We have reason to believe the Russian forces are planning to uh, and intend to attack Ukraine in the coming week, in the coming days. We hope that uh, the President Putin will, will think better of what I think will be an absolutely uh, crazy, a disastrous venture in, in Ukraine. Make no mistake, if Russia pursues its plans, it will be responsible for a ca catastrophic and needless war of choice. Russia's military occupies the Black Sea to the south of Ukraine, as well as land on its border to its east and north. The so-called operational readiness of Russian forces for an invasion is reaching a crescendo. The operational readiness uh, includes not only troops and not only equipment, but it includes also, let's say, hospital logistics, fueling, and so on and so forth. Former Ukrainian Deputy Defense Minister Alina Frolova says Russia could invade at any stage, even if its soldiers aren't fully supported with supply lines. Let's do not forget that uh, also Russians do not pay so much attention to the human lives. So for them, like a removal of troops without substantial um, uh, logistics uh, on food and fuel, it, it's possible because they don't care, actually. As fighting reportedly intensifies in the eastern Ukraine territories of Luhansk and Donbass, civilians are being evacuated by Russian-backed militias. As for a full-scale invasion and occupation, Lena Frolova says Russia simply doesn't have the manpower to take all of her country. Instead, it has just one real target. The only sense for them is to have a Kiev where you can uh, isolate the central government, for example, from, from managing the country. And this will give the political preference in negotiation. Thank you very much. The US Secretary of State is meant to meet with his Russian counterpart this week. Analysts are split about whether Putin will give the order to invade. The Russian military had claimed to be pulling its troops back, but the US says this fits a pattern of Russian disinformation. Everything we uh, said was likely to occur in, in the lead up to the actual invasion is happening. We're seeing false flag operations taking place in, in eastern Ukraine, uh, the manufacturing of provocations and justifications for Russia to go in. Russia has been waging an information war on Ukraine since 2014, since it started the uh, first its military aggression, the annexation of Crimea, and uh, uh, military aggression in Donbass. And in parallel with the military uh, aggression. Olga Tokaruk is a non-resident fellow at the Center for European Policy Analysis and has been tracking Russian disinformation. Since November 2021, the activity of uh, suspicious, inauthentic, uh, possibly coordinated accounts has increased by 3,000%. We're talking about the accounts that are tweeting about Ukraine, Russia, military build-up, military activity. So it's quite remarkable. Claims of terrorist bombings, shelling of citizens, all blamed on Ukraine by Russian separatists. Russia has been waging an information war on Ukraine since 2014. But now, eight years later, people are more aware of how this information and propaganda works. Uh, so it's less efficient, uh, I would dare to say, than it used to be before. Russia's navy is just over the horizon. But here in Mariupol, an hour's drive from the Russian border, you wouldn't know an invasion could be imminent. Of course I love the city. I was born here and spent my whole life here. The city lies on the shores of an amazing sea, which I also love and enjoy. At present, we live practically normal lives, basically the same as before the start of the war. Yes, unfortunately now it has become a part of our daily routine, but life continues. Roman Emiliakin is a member of the Mariupol City Council. He was a soldier and remains a reservist. As soon as my family is safe, I will have to turn up for military service to serve in the ranks of the border service. Roman says he and his wife and three children have had to discuss a wider war. The children learn about this in school too. They are given various booklets on how to recognise live ammunition and avoid accidental explosions by playing with it. 
We have discussed issues of evacuation with the children, questions regarding the fact that we would have to leave most of our things, our apartment, to get ready very quickly and drive away. And that in such a situation, everyone needs to know what they must do and where we will go and who will carry what, which toys they are taking. Recently, my child asked me, what if the Russians drop an atomic bomb on us? What buildings will be destroyed? He'd heard other children talking about this at school. Ukraine's military is showcasing its readiness in the air and on the ground. Ukraine's defence minister is running his own public relations campaign, highlighting every flight from the West that brings military hardware, ammunition and especially tank-busting rockets or anti-aircraft missiles. We need time. Uh, they cannot keep the uh, high readiness uh, troops uh, for a long period. Uh, in situation when they see for them no opportunity to use them as a uh, like a threat for negotiations, they will have to withdraw. Obviously, I would like for all things to be settled peacefully, so that no one will need to die, no one will need to fight. It would be nice if the Russian regime finally collapsed. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.